Going. What's up, everybody? This is Coach Jake. We have Tegan, Sydney, <laughs> and uh, so if you guys ever see these two, Sid was in the last video. This is Coach T, my partner in crime. Okay, so uh, hello Reddit. First of all, uh, I had the last video actually that was supposed to be internal, so I never really introduced myself because everybody knew me. I'm Coach Jake. I'm the head coach over at Dublin in Ohio out of Columbus, um, one of the suburbs here. And uh, I'm <clears throat> absolutely thrilled about our new program, but our last uh, video was, you have to have the link in order to watch it. And apparently it got 9,000 views. So <clears throat> I got a request from one of the moderators from Morris Theory just to kind of answer some questions, um, some general questions, why the changes, um, the demos, different concepts, repeats, uh, repeatable blocks, stuff like that. So we're just going to kind of talk about it. And I have Coach T. Again, Coach T is going to help me out with a couple things and getting her opinion on that. Uh, but that will be a little bit later. So <clears throat> let's talk about just a couple things. Um, first of all, the floor demo. I was told that Orange Theory said there's not going to be any more floor demos. Um, and that is absolutely wrong. <laughs> the coaches still have got to do a demonstration uh, on the back of our templates. I would actually show you, but um, it's actually uh, a confidentiality uh, clause on the back of our <clears throat> um, programs that we can't really share that with you. Uh, us coaches know that there's actually an asterisk uh, next to the movements that require a demonstration, primarily because it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. You can't just say a verbal cue and everybody knows what you're talking about. So us coaches have got to at least do, and I checked all of the templates, there's at least one asterisk on uh, every single template. So it doesn't matter what the day, somebody told me their coach said there are no dem demonstrations. That is not true. Uh, us coaches up in Dublin, we also at our coaches meeting, we're supposed to add value. So if we save 30 to 45 seconds not demonstrating a jumping jack, hopefully we can emphasize something else. Do I need to show you how to do a dump, jumping jack? No. But are there certain things that you should maybe remember, certain cues? Absolutely, and I should be able to coach you through that. However, I don't need to demonstrate it. Now, a good example was yesterday. We had a chest press and a decline push-up where we're really focusing on breaking the muscle down I saved time not demonstrating everything, and I was able to speak to what failure looked like. Um, especially as you get into like a chest press, after three rounds or several rounds of that superset, uh, your muscles are tired. So what I was able to talk to, to about everybody or talk about to everybody was um, if at one point your two dumbbells are not going up at the same rate, then that's your signal to stop. And again, I kind of demonstrated, I talked about the failure. That was something that I could kind of dial in a little bit more that I wasn't able to yesterday, uh, before, because ha if I had to demonstrate everything, then I wouldn't have the time for it. We have very limited time with our templates. We've got to kind of keep everything moving. So for them to say no demonstrations, that is, uh, that is not right. You still have to demonstrate uh, a lot. Now, that is the, up to the coach's um, discretion, uh, Coach T. <clears throat> Let me ask you this. Say you have a new person in class. Okay. You have an intro. Okay. Never done anything as far as fitness. Are you going to demonstrate everything? Yes. Why? Most definitely. Because they're not going to know the foundations initially of Orange Theory workouts. Right. So we need to show them, even if they have a good baseline of what a squat is, of what we call a standard of a squat at right. Orange Theory. Right, right, right. And you think about that with a lot of different things. Uh, it's up to us coaches to make sure that we're having a good um, a good feel of what the audience is. Now, if this is 5 a.m., right, the 5 a.m. troopers, they never miss a day, and I have maybe like a small group over on the weight floor, um, and I know them, they're all very athletic, maybe I'm not gonna demonstrate the stuff that I would if I had an intro. Um, again, it's gonna be the coaches um, discretion however you still there are there are no classes where a coach is not demonstrating everything or anything rather that's going to be non-negotiable and it got it got to kind of convey to us that if we are saving time by not demonstrating a jumping jack um 
a push up a bicep curl like most people know how to do a bicep curl there are still cues we're still going to cue it we're still going to keep say you know keep your elbows tight to your body shoulders back proud chest all that those small stuff we're still going to say it but we don't necessarily have to pick up dumbbells and actually demonstrate it we can do things even without dumbbells maybe one rep two reps um, but it should go relatively quick if we save time by excluding that we should be able to add value to something else in the block. Um, when we demonstrate something, it's not, again, just, it shouldn't be uh, in one ear out the other. And sometimes we do have the same cues over and over. And somebody who's been coming to Orange Theory, they probably heard it all. They're like, uh, coach so-and-so sounds like a robot when we want to add value to what we're saying. So once we have the new demonstration kind of um, uh, protocol, we will know, you should know that the things that we are demonstrating should have meaning behind them. And that's gonna be essentially what it kind of boils down to. Um, templates being repeated. Uh, yes, we are gonna have uh, our templates repeated. Uh, you've seen it on Reddit. Uh, it's two weeks at a time. And so the first through the 15th is gonna be repeated 16th through uh, the end of the month. Um, I kind of mentioned it and I also spoke in that video about just, I was just speaking to the two G's. Uh, we do primarily two G's. And so when I was talking, it is primarily speaking to two groups. Uh, the three groups are a little bit different. Um, if you don't know what the difference between them is, two group or two G is the ideal template that Orange Theory would deliver to our members. The 3G is going to be for more capacity, but it's gonna be a little bit more of the watered down version of the 2G. Uh, so when I speak about our templates and our programming, I'm just talking about the 2Gs. I'm not mentioning the 3Gs um, at all because they're just slightly different, that's all. <clears throat> okay, uh, will all out with Aoki be repeated? Um, you heard me kind of say it, yes and no. Uh, the 2G is, what we did on the first and the Aoki, the 16th is gonna be a 3G only. Um, so yes and no, yes, it is gonna be similar movements, uh, but the exact template, it's not gonna be 2G. You don't have a choice to coach the 2G, it's only strictly gonna be a three group class. So yes and no. Uh, how are benchmark signatures, mayhem, all that good stuff gonna fit in? Well. When they rolled out the new programming to us coaches, uh, they primarily said they're gonna try to fit two, <clears throat> excuse me, two to three recordables within a month. Um, so something that's gonna be on the challenge tracker, something that's gonna be uh, either in the app, one way or the other, you can track it. So two to three roughly recordables throughout every month. Um, what about Mayhem? Well, uh, they even mentioned it when they did the template rollout. They don't know. <laughs> uh, we don't know it until a couple weeks before May happens. Um, we typically find out what the templates are gonna look like. They roll it out to us. And then as a head coach, we roll it out to uh, the rest of our um, coaches. But right now, Mayhem, I don't know how it's, what it's gonna look like or anything like that. We will still have Mayhem. We will still have our benchmarks and stuff like that. But as far as the repeatability, I'm not entirely sure right now. Benchmarks, will they be repeated? Uh, no, <laughs> it is going to be, you have one benchmark in a month, primarily because you can, you can make the, the solid argument that not everybody is going to see the benchmark, but on the flip side, a lot of people skip benchmarks on purpose. Um, but you're also not going to see an improvement two weeks later. So if I do a 12 minute run for distance, uh, I'm not going to see a huge jump or anything like that in two weeks. It's not going to be quantifiable. So benchmarks will not be repeated uh it, within the same month now yes we're repeating the template twice and some people get upset with that and i get it because at orange theory we say something new every day every day but we're going to talk about the science uh behind the different concepts that we're seeing within our program now that it would be beneficial to actually repeat them but at the same time when we have uh two weeks or excuse me two weeks at a time rolled out in a month you may never see those workouts ever again we don't know right now but at most we'll see it or at least we'll see it two times instead of we'll only see it one time and then never again so i don't think it's that big of a deal but why did we need to change the concepts um to be more specific well uh when they rolled it out to us and actually i'm going to call on uh coach T. all right coach t so we have on the otb we've got 10 deadlifts 10 bicep curls 
10 front squats, 10 shoulder presses. How would you coach that? It's a 10 minute block or a 10 and a half minute block. You've got four exercises, 10 reps a piece. How would you, how would you actually like coach that? So it, what kind of day is Let's it? Let's just say um, it's, uh, it's an ESP. It's an ESP day. <laughs> yep. Um, so I would kind of just use that as it, it's almost a primer, but it's also a circuit as well. Um, you're repeating those exercises until time is called and you're making sure that it is a challenging but doable weight, but it's something that you can keep repeating with for multiple rounds. Sure. So would you have them use the same weight for all of them? No. No. Uh, how would they split it up? Deadlifts, curls, front squats, shoulder presses. Um, well, your last three are upper body, mm -hmm. correct? So I would say your deadlift is probably your meat part of the workout. You're definitely making sure you're trying to increase and challenge yourself with that exercise, with that weight, and then making sure you're matching um, those same weights for that bicep curl for that shoulder press. Yeah, this is this is exactly why I love Coach T because I would probably coach it very similarly. <laughs> uh, but let's just say some, now again, I'm a strength coach. Um, Coach T has had uh, plenty of strength in her background, uh, bodybuilder, I could go on. But to somebody who's been, let's say, a marathon runner, right? They've been a cardio bunny their entire life. They become a trainer. That's what their mindset is. That's what that's what they can tell everybody and coach everybody. And none of them are wrong. The, coach T and I could say 10 deadlifts, 10 deadlifts, put the dumbbells down, grab a new set for bicep curls, put them down, new set, new set. Somebody who's thinking endurance just automatically, they could say, okay, pick a weight that's probably gonna be the most doable for the bicep curl, the shoulder press, and you're gonna use that same weight for all of them. Somebody might say, okay, you're doing a deadlift and a bicep curl, back to back, use it as a superset. The, the difference between the coaching styles uh, is vast. Think of it on a spectrum, not just a scale, but rather an entire spectrum. <clears throat> Us coaches can, had the freedom because nothing was as specific. The concept that we're gonna be rolling out now is gonna be non-negotiable. A lot of them are very direct and we're supposed to coach a certain way to get a certain stimulus uh, of our members. Now, we measure performance at Orange Theory. Why do you say that, Coach Jake? Well, we have our one mile benchmark, our 12 minute run for distance, the 200, the 500, the 2000 meter row. That's what we have cur currently uh, for our benchmarks. So we measure performance. A lot of times with that mindset, because we're measuring performance, you're either getting better, you're staying the same, or you're getting worse. One of those three. So if we're gonna be working out 60 minutes at a time, sometimes 45, um, sometimes 90. <clears throat> what we're doing should be in that same direction. We all need to be in alignment as a brand for Orange Theory uh, because we are measuring performance regularly. Every month there's another, there's another benchmark and that's not gonna change. In fact, we have um, challenges that are going to put your records, your distance, your time, all that stuff in the challenge tracker. So again, we have things that we're measuring. What we're doing day to day should be in alignment to go in that same direction. So training in general will physiologically make you better. Uh, if you're doing 30% of your capacity with weights, with running, you can name a couple dozen things, you're gonna get better. Now, it might be very noticeable, it may not, but after month after month, what ends up happening is that 30% that you kind of felt like now it's 10% or maybe it's 15% of what your actual capacity is. If there's no, no, nothing to ever tell you to change, then you're probably not working within that capacity. Now, again, the 30% is the minimum uh, for any phys anybody for physiologically to get better, especially with strength, especially with conditioning. 30% um, is the minimum. On the flip side, you have 80 to 85% is gonna be really where you see uh, a lot of people really excel. You wanna have a program that's gonna push you to your limits because the further you push your limits, the better you're gonna get. Now, again, there's a balance of that. You don't wanna go too far and have overtraining. However, 85%, especially when it comes to strength, because that's my jam, 
uh, that's going to be what you are working within or above. So <clears throat> we'll talk about super, super compensation in a little bit. That's just like me just geeking out, talking about science and all that. But different protocols that you train will help maximize different performances. And that is simple. That is uh, whether you like it or not, that's that's science. Um, I can tell you percentages and numbers and all this other good stuff that is proven through studies to actually show improvement. Um, I've <clears throat> So I have my degree in exercise physiology, uh, exercise kinesiology. Um, I have a dozen certs, but I'm also a CSCS certified strength coach, but strength is my jam. So when I see Orange Theory rolling out a bunch of protocols and a bunch of concepts that are going to help strength, I'm like, Man, let me tell you, I am proud of them. I love it and welcome it. So the programming in itself is evolving. Now in March, we had our dry try prep. Uh, that is not gonna be a long-term series. Uh, they, well, excuse me, that's not gonna be something that translates into a bunch of things. The dry try prep, uh, from what I believe, is still gonna stay around. But what we're doing day to day is now gonna be the preparation for what's coming next. So. I saw a couple of people on Reddit says April has had a lot of endurance and statistically it's about the same as any other. Uh, however, what's our next big benchmark? It's going to be the run for distance. So what we're doing right now should help increase our performance for the one uh, 12 minute run benchmark. <clears throat> so again, just think about what we're doing every day today is going to help us in stay in alignment with our actual performance measures. Uh, I got a lot of questions about the five by five, the chipper um, drop set, load and explode. Are those going anywhere because they're not being promoted on our calendar anymore? Well, five by five is an actual concept. It's called the Texas method. Um, when you get dive into strength, that's pretty common, commonly used. Uh, and really the science hasn't advanced in a long time. It's just become more and more common. Uh, but five by five has to do with strength. It's talked about getting uh, an absolute mayhem. I'd love to dive into that. Uh, somebody asked me to, and I would absolutely love to. Uh, chipper is a style of a workout. Uh, you have our drop set, load and explode. Again, these are all training concepts that we can use within our program. So they're not going to be necessarily featured so much as opposed to they're just going to be a central piece uh, that holds uh, another tool in the toolbox. So let's talk about maximizing performance. A couple things that we've already seen in these past, past couple weeks uh, is our maximum effort, right? We just had today, we had your top speed, everything you got, you're gonna have plenty of time to recover in between and you're gonna give it your everything. Now, a big part of that is heightening your ceiling, right? Some people will hold back how fast they go because they know there's another interval coming. That's a fair point. I don't want, if I'm a football player, I don't want to give everything in the first half and have nothing left in the second half. So there's an amount of pacing that kind of comes with it, but you have three minutes to recover in between. 30 second all out, three minutes, and all you do is recover. You can use that time. And again, we're not, we're not forcing anybody that you need to take three minutes of walking recovery. We tell and coach everybody, find your base pace as quickly as possible, but that's up to the person. If you are really focusing on speed, that 30 second all out is gonna be top speed, top performance, you're raising your ceiling, you're testing your limits, and then whatever time you need, if that's two out of the three minutes, then so be it. If somebody, I say it all the time, if somebody's in here working out, they just want a good workout, this is still gonna be just brutal for them. But if you're wanting more calories, if you want that uh, that, want, that that one piece where you're just burning off stress, you're fighting your demons, then by all means, find your base base faster than normal because it'll still take a lot if you're putting your full effort for the 30 second all out. But maximum effort, huge concept. We get that on the rower, which was yesterday, which was, what's today? Tuesday? Tuesday. Uh, Monday, Monday the 11th, and then again, today's the 12th. We had two days uh, back to back, and really you can go all out effort on your row, and it's not really gonna affect an all out 30 second effort on the treadmill. And that's gonna be part of the super compensation that I'll kind of dive into in a little bit. But maximum effort is huge. We didn't used to have that. Uh, and I was telling our coaching staff, we used to celebrate PRs uh, like crazy. And as more things got rolled out, I feel like at some point we stopped. So yesterday we had a, a we had the brag board out. We had people celebrating. Coach T hit what? What was your speed today? 
My speed was 11. 11, what's up? Track star over here. But <laughs> it, we're getting back to uh, celebrating a lot of the peak performances. And somewhere along the way, we kind of stopped that. Uh, it's a good thing to actually kind of check that really every so often and again the maximum effort is going to be a concept you'll see at least twice a month because we're doing it now and then we'll see in a couple weeks work and rest i love that because as a power lifter olympic lifter bodybuilder you have different types of training styles and you typically will push yourself to work hard to where you deserve rest um, or you've earned the rest I was telling the, when I rolled out these templates, what we used to do um, back back in the day, you would be at a squat rack, load up, again, these are um, AAA, AAA baseball players, load up a bar, 185 pounds, and we would squat. We would squat 15 reps, as fast as you can, as explosive as you can, and 185, depending on your weight, it would go up, it would go down, but uh, I had 185, and we, had, we were stri strapped uh, up to a heart rate monitor, we had a TV above our squat rack. Like clockwork, as soon as we put the barbell down, our heart rate would shoot up. After having your muscles tense, they're working, they're contracting, they're stretching, your body demands oxygen. So naturally, it will increase your heart rate. You have to breathe more, you have to absorb more oxygen. And so you'll have a metabolic effect. Your heart rate will have a response. And it's only when your heart rate comes down to a certain percentage that the screen up there will actually turn blue. And that's when you go, or green, I believe. Uh, and that's when you have to go again. So you should have the heart rate effect to spike after lifting heavy. Why do we do that? Well, if you're working with, let's just say again, 30% of your true capacity, 30% of your true capacity is gonna feel like nothing. And we're gonna talk about rep ranges and all that stuff, but, <clears throat> When I was talking about this to our studio manager and the assistant, they even said like, you know, I've been stuck to 10s and 15s with squats and this and that for so long, I didn't even think twice about it. And that's more so the habits that we create over time. The work and rest is to create a concept so that you are pushing yourself to the limit. Um, you need the rest. If I said I had five more reps in the tank, not gonna happen. If Coach T says, hey, Jake, deadlift a couple more, it's not gonna happen. Coach, Coach T, uh, what are your thoughts about the work and rest? Let's hear it. I love work Oops. and rest. So honestly, I love how the workouts have been going, especially rack rest, or what was it? Rack to rest. Yeah. Um, yesterday just because it's physically forcing people to take that recovery and fully catch that breath and it kind of makes them think a little bit hey i could probably push 10 more pounds on my deadlift next round so i can physically take more time to recover as a coach it forces yourself uh, it forces you to be more of a personal trainer give more personal touches uh, to your members because uh, you know you're going to have a lot of people fighting for weight uh, when they're trying to increase and you've got that one person that's holding on to those same weights and you have to go up to that member that's been used to all of these workouts for so long and holding on to the same weights and be like, hey, I know you got 10 more pounds in you. Uh, you know, not being mean and saying, yeah. hey, this other piece person needs your weight. But, for sure, yeah, for know? sure, for so, sure. Yeah. I also I also say we need to buy more weights because everybody's yes, realized they're do. pretty strong. They're, pre they're pretty strong. And that's a good thing. That's that's a, a, a very good thing to see. Um, and what I tell a lot of members is the, I guess the paradigm that you're facing with is being comfortable and actually pushing yourself and what everything feels like. If you've been comfortable for so long, you've been using the same weights for so long, sometimes you forget what actually needing rest feels like. Mm -hmm. So with this new program, a lot of people are saying, oh, my body's just hurting, it's aching. Well, that makes us happy because as a coaching staff, mm -hmm. we've been trying to push you and it's been working, go figure. Yeah. Uh, but what, what the work and rest is supposed to bring to you is this thought of, mm -hmm. can I do more? And it's not always just the weight. It's, can you have more control over your movement? Can you have more range of motion? Um, can you lift heavier weights? Yes, but are you working on any imbalances? I I talk to our coaches about it all the time. The coaches have definitely relayed that message, but uh, what does symmetry look like? 
if a chest press, again, if your right arm is going up faster than your left, then whoa, 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 we need to stop. You can only go as heavy as your weaker side. But that being the case, whenever you solve any imbalances, you typically get stronger. Whenever you work on your technique, uh, I'm again, very big into heavy squats, heavy deadlifts, heavy heavy chest press. Uh, when you get a lot of the small technique kind of fine tuning uh, factors down, you notice that you're stronger. You notice that you can move more weight. And that's, again, a good thing. We also have uh, sub max efforts. Again, we're talking about anaerobic versus aerobic, but whenever we have the pushes into a walk and recovery, that is not a normal thing, but it is a specific goal that we have to help endurance. Uh, I, in my last video, I talked about I ran track and I didn't like it, but I was quick. Days out of the week, you can be as fast as you want, but if you want to increase your endurance, you have to have a sub max. So keep it under your absolute max effort and you need to be able to repeat it over and over and over. That's what helps build endurance within an athlete. And again, my track coach said he has no endurance, which was true. I could sprint here to there for hundred meters, 10, nine, and, but I couldn't run the 400 nearly as effective. I would just poop out way before. So the endurance, is another element that we're working through, but sub-maximal efforts, the push to a walk and recovery, something very new, but it is effective. So we have these new concepts that are going to hopefully help us with our benchmarks, our one mile benchmark, our 12 minute run for distance, our 2000 meter row. Those are all things that we're measuring progress or measuring, uh, measuring your distance, your time and so on. Hopefully these concept, concepts are gonna help us within a matter of weeks, months, time to come. Um, why does my body hurt? <laughs> well, the struggle is real, real, right? We are doing a lot of accessory work that's helping to complement our main movement. Um, we have primer blocks, we have sets, we have circuits to help us for a lift that is about to come, for a row that is about to come, for a run that is about to come. So I believe that we're controlling the weight better. We are probably going a little bit heavier and we have more control over the entire range of motion. Now, I think a good example was April 3rd, um, where we prioritized prioritized a, uh, a plank blast off, and we had a shoulder press and a deadlift right after it. The more rounds you got in, the better your shoulders felt, because it was opening up the shoulder joint, the more the deadlift felt, be, uh, the better the deadlift felt. Uh, Primarily because once you go further into the range of motion for the plank blast off, it opens up your hips. Whenever you open up your hips, you have more muscles to actually uh, engage, primarily your auxiliary muscles. So April 3rd allowed us to have not only the time to lift the weight, but had the proper mobility to lift the weight. So all of a sudden, a lot of people are within the room are grabbing heavier weights like, oh, this feels better. Well, if it feels better, you go a little bit heavier. If it feels better, you control it for longer. And a lot of those, a lot of those uh, small um, fine tuning technique things, they add up. And so now you're using muscles that you didn't before. Um, now your glutes are much more sore because you're, you have greater hip extension, things like that. Uh, so there's more intention behind the strength. There's more intention. We have primer blocks, uh, for the treadmill so people are running faster uh the feel of all of our movements is getting hopefully better because of the primer blocks because of the sets um and again it's stuff that as an, an athlete you know we would we would have the nfl combine if somebody's running a 40-yard dash they would do about 45 minutes of work beforehand just to run run for less than five seconds there's a lot of stuff that is going to help what you're doing next for performance and the primer blocks are in there. They're very intentional at getting blood pumping to the proper muscles that it gets them ready. And I absolutely love it. So let's talk about the science behind it. Super compensation, right? Let's just talk about uh, a bodybuilder, right? So again, we talk about 30% of your capacity. Um, a bodybuilder primarily deals with hypertrophy, bunch of reps, a bunch of volume. We tear our muscles down so much to where performance the next day, maybe two days goes down. So coach T, mm. <laughs> uh, your legs, did you destroy them yesterday? I did. 
How do they feel today? They are sore. <laughs> so yeah. what happens is she works her legs, right? In hypertrophy, yeah. you're looking for uh, not necessarily, not necessarily performance, but you look for aesthetics. Bodybuilding in general, you work with the bodybuilder and they are working to add mass to your muscles. You break it down so much hypertrophy that the actual mass increases. However, if I told her, okay, let's go and lift legs again today, no. what would you say? No. no. <laughs> so the performance goes down, right? You do have an amount of super compensation, but that's talking about the volume, um, 10 to, or, well, excuse me, 15 reps and above, uh, and you go for probably a total of several hundred reps within the actual workout. And again, that's, how long did you work out? An hour and a half. An hour and a half, 90 minutes of nothing but legs. Here at Orange Theory, well, let's actually, let's, before we dive into Orange Theory, let's go with the power lifter. Uh, I do powerlifting sets. Uh, I kind of like the jack of all trades, but I do powerlifting where I have a heavy deadlift. It's uh, three singles, three minutes apart, but it's 95% of what my max is. It is a heavy, heavy lift. If I get done with three reps and I didn't do any of my accessory movements afterwards, I could get done with a heavy deadlift or a heavy squat, walk away, and my legs wouldn't feel that bad. I'm working my top sets, so you have what's called super compensation. You're like, you, because you hit your top sets, you're gonna get better, right? And then you're gonna get better. What happens with bodybuilding, you do get the aesthetics, uh, you do get a, an amount of strength, but what happens is your performance goes down and then it comes back up. Performance goes down, then it comes back up. So when you work through proper super compensation, your performance the next day doesn't really go down. However, you have to hit those top heavy, heavy, heavy sets. If you're not, you're not gonna see that big jump with the super compensation and your muscles properly adapt. Uh, the problem with what people got a lot of, a lot of people got very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Problem was they weren't pushing themselves what, to what they should have. With these new protocols, we have that opportunity to. When we see a heavy squat, yeah, we're gonna be sore the next day, but you should be able to kind of shake it out. If you're stretching, you're drinking enough water, you're properly eating all of this, the small things that happen outside of the studio. Uh, say we go into a bunch of lunges and squats, it's not enough to where it's gonna put us down the next day. You might, uh, but maybe that's the first time you're doing it. You're finally putting yourself to the limit. After several weeks of doing what we're doing, you're gonna be like, oh, it's not a big deal. Uh, I say that from experience. I've had several football players um, that we do legs throughout the week. We do uh, heavy clean, we do back squats, and we do, we'll do deadlifts. At no point do those players say, hey coach, you know, I can't practice. Uh, I just did legs the other day. That coach would be living because <laughs> it doesn't happen. It's all about how you condition your muscles, how you properly uh, work out. Are you pushing yourself to the limit? Now the difference is they work with um, percentages. We don't have a barbell, we don't have stuff like that. We've got dumbbells. So you have to remember what hard feels like. That way you can push yourself. Several weeks later, after you get so many deadlifts, so many squats, the 35s now feel like 30s. That's your time to actually go up. The work to rest ratio, um, you, you don't feel like you need it. That's when you go up. There's progressive overload in it, but that's kind of up to you guys. As a coach, I can check your form, I can check your tempo, I can tell you everything looks good. Good coach, a seasoned coach will be able to pick that out and say, you need to go heavier. Or as long as everything feels good, no injuries, no nothing like that, you should probably go heavier. Now, injuries are a whole nother thing. As coaches, we should not just automatically say, just go ahead and grab heavier weight. That's a whole nother story. But short-term study, uh, anybody who works with higher amounts of reps does see typical mass growth a little bit faster. Um, strength does go up a little bit faster. However, they plateau faster. So the rep range is eight, eight reps um, and to about on the lower side of four. That is proven scientifically that if you work X amount of percentages, heavier weights, four to eight, you're gonna consistently build dense and solid lean muscle. Whenever you get into volume, switching it up and going down. So if you're working 10 above and you switch to six to eight, four to eight, somewhere in there, you're gonna see progress. And I think that a lot of 
people from Lawrence Theory were working with 10 or above because that's what we used to do. Just in March, we had a lot of sets, a lot of blocks over on the wait floor that were 10 and above. Now we're switching to six to eight and a lot of people are feeling the, <laughs> the difference because you switch up and all of a sudden your strength shoots up. That's what super compensation is all about. But uh, I've seen a lot of comments like, I don't like this, I don't like that. All that I'm here to tell you is your opinions are your opinions. You can have your opinions. I'm not going to take anything away from it, but the concepts that we are now incorporating will make you get better. According to science, these are protocols that I've seen working with um, in collegiate athletes, uh, minor league athletes. These are things that will make you get better. Now, as a coach, if somebody doesn't want to get better, we can't force them to. We've got a lot of things like today, we had a 30 second all out. You wanna take a base base really, really quick, then so be it, that's up to you. For those who are trying to get better, I will be your absolute biggest cheerleader. Uh, it takes a lot of courage to, to kind of step up your game and level up. If you wanna be mediocre, you keep doing the same thing. I cannot emphasize that enough. I truly believe that with me. I truly believe that with T, right T? Right. That's right. So <clears throat> the things that we're doing, it's changed. Nobody likes to have change, but it's performance based. An athlete will typically have these different protocols set in stone for weeks on end. It makes sense that Orange Theory is doing the same. The 40 pound dumbbell is going to stay 40 pounds. It's not that we're changing the actual weight. We're just getting stronger. We're just getting harder. We're becoming a little bit more of a forged athlete. And so I challenge you guys, if you guys don't like how, or don't like to repeat it, uh, switch it up. If you start on the treadmill, start on the weight floor. Uh, it's going to be entirely different stimulus. It's going to feel very, very different. Um, yes, it's going to be the same, same blocks. It's going to be the same sets, uh, but it's going to feel different. And so I challenge you guys, if you're T, where do you start? Where do I start? Yeah. I have been starting on the rower lately, but during transformation challenge, I would start on the tread. It's kind of different because uh, we know the templates are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we do have a heads up. See, I knew there was all outs today, so I was like, I got to warm up and go yep. on the rower. Yep. And then some people are on the flip side. I just want to get it over with. Uh, there's nothing wrong. I, 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 I do like that people know what's coming sometimes. Sometimes it helps mentally, but sometimes it's better if you don't know. Uh, for those who are checking it out on Reddit, uh, still love you guys, but I respect more people if you know what's coming and you still don't skip a day. For those people who will see it and mm -hmm. they don't show up, mm -hmm. I will make a point. Uh, we had, I think it was the 2000 meter row, and I would told everybody, I was like, before we lock and load you guys, there are people who saw it was 2000 meter row and they're not here. Mm -hmm. That ain't you. And I got everybody hyped, like we're getting ready for war. And there's a certain element, especially mentally, uh, that kind of kind of gets into, you know, it's going to be a grind and you still come in and grind it out. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that carries a lot of weight for me. What about you, T? Yeah, it does. Actually, I was going to say we had a member that said she doesn't look at the template until her eight hour window. So she, can't, so she can't cancel. So she can't, so she's like, I, so I'm happy about what's to come, mm. but mm. I can't cancel. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a little bit of a little bit of money, and uh, that's yeah. Chipotle money to me in my exactly. eyes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I will I will again tip my hat off to anybody uh, who will look at the template and still come in. Uh, Orange Theory has been doing something for the longest time. We purposely don't tell anybody what it is mm -hmm. because the stuff that you don't like is probably the stuff that you need. Like me, I'm built for power and strength and endurance is not something that I like to do because I don't have the patience for it and it's tough, but do I need it? Absolutely. Uh, I am, I don't have to run a 5k or anything like that, but I know that's what athletes do. So, and I understand that there's a cardiac capacity that's going to translate from the treadmill over to the weight floor, whether you like it or not. I mean, a lot of times we're doing the work to rest those endurance days on the treadmill is going to actually help some of your lifts. I guarantee it. So I am going to be covering a couple more subjects uh, on another date. This is a uh, 39 minutes, 30 going on 40 minutes. So I do plan on talking about marathon training. Uh, you'll probably see coach T in some of these videos. 
uh, we're gonna talk about some power walking. So uh, for anybody who's looked it up on Reddit, drop some uh, some suggestions and stuff we'll cover. And I think next time we were just gonna do like a fre frequently asked questions kind of thing. Yeah, like, that would be oh good. <laughs> and it, it'll just be it'll just be us spitballing, uh, us talking. Uh, but here we try to keep us coaches at the highest of standards. And you could come to our studio and say we're gonna do it right. We're gonna we're gonna do everything that we're supposed to. Um, and we're gonna try to convey that same standard to our members. So if you have any questions, let us know. Um, love you guys. You guys take care.